Hi everyone, Paul Elam here with A Voice for Men and with a question that needs to be answered. Is talk show mogul Dr. Phil afraid of Janet Bloomfield? Well, it appears that either he or some of his senior staff are in fact quite afraid of what the delightful Miss Bloomfield has to say about men's rights. Janet was brought to Los Angeles to appear on a segment of The Doctors, a popular spinoff of the original Dr. Phil show, now produced by Phil McGraw and his son Jay. She was invited to appear on the show by producers Cassie Betcher and Justin Winters. According to my inside sources, the appearance went very well. Janet's blunt, no-nonsense directness was popular with the audience. So were her talking points. Perhaps she was too popular. The show was scheduled to air today, but was pulled just hours in advance by higher-ups in the production outfit. Higher-ups in this case would appear to point directly to Dr. Phil or to someone else with absolute authority over what airs. I will get to more of that in a bit, but first let me share information with you as it has been relayed to me. Janet was introduced to the audience by Dr. Travis Stork, who said that the gender wars were something they've talked about on the show before. He also introduced Janet as a wife and a mother and informed the audience that they would not believe the side she takes in the gender wars. So it was clear from the start that the producers and indeed the talent on the doctors knew who Janet was and were pretty familiar with her work as an MHRA. There was apparently one problem though. The audience actually did believe Janet and responded enthusiastically to her message. So did the cast of the doctors, though it didn't start out that way. Dr. Stork apparently didn't like Janet's polemical headlines to which Janet retorted that writing over the top outrageous headlines is a good way to get interviewed on the doctors. The audience, I'm told, clapped loudly in support of that sassiness. Bloomfield apparently took command from there, following that up by saying that if you only read her headlines, you might think she's a terrible person, but if you read the article, you'll see that she's discussing how dangerous the sexual environment has become for men. That is when Dr. Jennifer Ashton said that she feared for her son more than her daughter. I don't have to speculate on exactly what she meant by that. She openly and clearly stated that she was more afraid of her son being the target of a false accusation than of her daughter being raped. Smart woman. Ashton buttressed her support of a more sane narrative by disclosing that she had been attacked by feminists for saying that an elderly patient looked great after being treated. That was after 20 years of specializing in women's health. Evidently, the appearance-phobic contingent of the sisterhood thought a doctor telling a geriatric patient that they looked great was more evidence of a linear-thinking, phallocentric conspiracy of shitlords who keep the facially challenged oppressed with looksism. More proof, folks. People in the media know about the crazy. They are just too cowed to talk about it or too brainwashed to see it. I think Janet's appearance might have temporarily broken the buckles on some of their muzzles. Things went from good to better from there, depending on how you look at it. The audience was openly supportive of Bloomfield, and so was most of the cast during the entire appearance. Lots of applause, no booing, and no real opportunity to get shots of jeering, outraged women in the audience. From my observations, that is exactly what presented a problem for Dr. Phil or someone else who represents his interest. Phil McGraw has a long career based on a lot of male bashing and other forms of misandry. I addressed this in another video years ago, link in the low bar. Pardon the poor sound quality on that one, I made it with crappy equipment. But the point still gets across. Dr. Phil's bread and butter is a female audience who want to blame men for their problems. He positions himself as white knight and savior, a true Texas tough guy who is there to help both men and women realize that men are to blame for everything. If you ever read his book, Relationship Rescue, you will see this attitude expressed with nauseating redundancy. Well, this Texan has been calling bullshit on that for a long time, and I'm calling bullshit on it right now. 
when Cassie Betcher, apparently with great disappointment, informed Bloomfield that her segment had been pulled, she said that she only had just then been informed of the decision. In show business, like anywhere else, when lower to mid-level managers get informed of major decisions, it is from higher up on the food chain. In this case, that points directly to senior producers, one of them being Dr. Phil. No matter how generous we try to be, there are some inescapable conclusions here if we are to employ common sense about modern sexual politics, television media, and what is on the open record about McGraw. Had the audience and or the cast turned against Janet, I am betting that this would have run. To conclude that it was pulled because of the outrage it would have caused in feminists, we only need to ask one question. What do we imagine the feminist reaction would be to a popular television program with a largely supportive audience airing an episode featuring honest discussion about feminist bullying and intolerance? Look, let's get real. This is a no-brainer. Even more than when ABC 2020 pulled an interview with me after Elizabeth Vargas failed at a hit piece just before she tumbled her way into alcohol rehab. That episode of The Doctors was popular with its local producers, very popular with the audience, and featured rare and incisive exploration into issues that most media outlets don't get near. But it would have offended a number of professional victim cry bullies whose silence is golden to men like Phil McGraw. It's hard to know if it is them he fears or if it is people like Janet Bloomfield. After all, had that segment aired with all its raucous applause for men being treated more fairly, Dr. Phil might eventually have some splaining to do. In this particular case, we will never know. After investing time and money into the event, the real powers to be at the doctors have for now averted a shotgun blast to their normal, ideologically safer platform. Still, as we see every day now, times are changing. Treating men's issues with thoughtfulness is finally growing in popularity. If Phil McGraw and other misandry profiteers want to head that off at the pass, I think they're going to have to eventually can a lot more material than they can afford. And well, that's it for today's talk. As always, if you want to support my work, you can go through the ABFM Patreon, show some love. Hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.